So what makes Freya so unique? How did she come to embody such contrasting qualities? And what secrets does she hold that have captivated and inspired people for centuries? Freya's origins lie in the Vana gods, one of the two major groups of gods in Norse mythology, the other being the Aesir. While the Aesir are closely associated with war, order and sovereignty, the Vanir embody fertility, prosperity and the natural world. Freja, as a member of the Vanir gods, naturally inherited these qualities, but her story doesn't stop there. She is not merely a goddess who nurtures life, she is also a goddess who can take it away with equal ease. From her ability to bestow love and fertility to her power on the battlefield, Freya embodies the perfect balance of nurturing and destruction. This dual nature is not just a random assortment of traits, it reflects a deeper understanding of the world by the Vikings. In a harsh and often brutal environment, life and death, love and war were two sides of the same coin. Freya's dual role in these areas made her an essential deity, one whose influence extended far beyond what many would expect. But how did she become such a powerful and multifaceted figure? What events in her life and mythology shaped her into the goddess she became? To understand Freya, one must delve into her relationships, her battles and her magic, each of which reveals a different facet of this extraordinary goddess. One of the most fascinating aspects of Freya's character is her association with the Valkyries, those fierce supernatural women who choose the slain on the battlefield. Many know the Valkyries as the servants of Odin, who escort fallen warriors to Valhalla. However, Freya has a claim to these warrior women as well, one that underscores her status as a goddess of war and death. In Norse mythology, Freya has the power to claim half of the warriors who die in battle. These warriors are taken to her hall, Folkvanga, a realm that rivals Odin's Valhalla. This act alone places Freya in a unique position of authority, as she shares the power over the fallen with Odin himself. But why would a goddess of love have such a dark and formidable role? The answer lies in the Viking understanding of life, where love and war are intertwined. Freya, embodying both, could offer love and fertility, but also demand a toll in blood. The Valkyries, often depicted as beautiful yet terrifying figures, serve under Freya as well as Odin. In some tales, they are considered her handmaidens, assisting her in the selection of the slain. These warrior women, with their connection to both death and the afterlife, further emphasize Freya's dual nature. They ride through the skies on horseback, delivering warriors to their final resting places, whether it be Valhalla or Folkvanga. This shared command over the Valkyries illustrates Freya's deep involvement in the fate of warriors and her role as a goddess who straddles the worlds of the living and the dead. Freya is not just a goddess of love and war. She is also a powerful sorceress, mastering a type of magic known as Saida. Saida is a form of Norse magic associated with prophecy, fate and the ability to influence the course of events. In a world where the future was often uncertain, the ability to predict and control destiny was a power feared and respected by both gods and mortals alike. Freya's mastery of Saida is one of the many traits that set her apart from other deities. Unlike many gods who react to events, Freya actively shapes them, bending the world to her will through her magical abilities. It's said that she taught Odin himself the art of Saida, a testament to her superior skill and knowledge. This magic allowed her to see into the future, communicate with the dead and transform her appearance, among other abilities. One of the most famous aspects of Freya's magical prowess is her falcon cloak, a garment that allows her to take the form of a falcon and fly between worlds. This ability to transform and traverse realms highlights her role as a bridge between different aspects of existence, life and death, love and war, the physical and the spiritual. But Seda was not without its risks. The practice was considered somewhat taboo even among the gods as it involved manipulating the threads of fate. Yet Freya embraced this power, demonstrating her willingness to walk paths others feared to tread. At the heart of Freya's story is a deep and abiding love, not just for the world she nurtures, but for her lost husband, Oda. 
The tale of Freya and Odda is one of the most poignant in Norse mythology, filled with love, loss and longing. Oda, whose name means inspiration or fury, mysteriously disappeared, leaving Freya to search for him across the Nine Realms. In her grief she shed tears of red gold, which fell to the earth and became precious gems. This story of love and loss adds a layer of vulnerability to Freya's otherwise formidable character. Despite her power and strength, she is not immune to sorrow. Her tears turning into gold and amber symbolize the beauty that can emerge from even the deepest pain. This duality, strength and sorrow, power and vulnerability, makes Freya a deeply relatable figure, embodying the full range of human emotions. The Brisingaman necklace, another key symbol in Freya's mythology, further illustrates her complex nature. This necklace, crafted by four dwarves, is said to be the most beautiful piece of jewellery in all the realms. To obtain it, Freya spent four nights with the dwarves, a decision that some myths suggest was controversial even among the gods. But for Freya, the Brisingerman was more than just a piece of jewellery. It represented her power, status and the length she would go to maintain them. The Brisingerman is also a symbol of Freya's connection to fertility and prosperity. As a goddess of love, she used the necklace to amplify her powers, ensuring that the land remained fertile and that love flourished among mortals. But like everything associated with Freya, the necklace also had a darker side, being linked to her role as a war goddess. In some tales, it is said that she wore the Brisingerman into battle, using its power to strike fear into the hearts of her enemies. Freya's influence extends beyond the mortal realm and into the afterlife, where she continues to guide and care for the souls of the dead. Her Hall Folkvanger is not just a resting place for fallen warriors, but also a symbol of the cycle of life and death that permeates Norse mythology. While Valhalla, ruled by Odin, is often the more famous destination for warriors, Folkvanger is equally important, representing a different aspect of the afterlife. In Folkvanger, Freya receives half of those who die in battle, where they are said to live in peace until Ragnarok, the end of the world. This selection process underscores Freya's authority over life and death, as she has the power to determine the fate of fallen heroes. But Folkvanger is more than just a place of rest. It is a realm where Freya's nurturing side comes to the fore. Here, the dead are not only honoured as warriors, but also cared for by the goddess, who ensures their comfort and well-being in the afterlife. Freya's role in the afterlife also ties into her mastery of Cider, as she is able to communicate with the dead and influence their spirits. This ability to traverse the boundaries between life and death further cements her status as a goddess who embodies the full spectrum of existence. In some traditions, it is believed that Freya's Hall is not only a place for fallen warriors, but also for couples who were deeply in love during their lives. This belief highlights Freya's role as a protector of love, even in death ensuring that the bonds forged in life continue in the afterlife. The cyclical nature of life and death is a central theme in Norse cosmology, and Freya's role as a guide for souls underscores this belief. Death is not seen as an end, but as a transformation, a continuation of the journey in a different form. Freya, with her deep understanding of this cycle, embodies the idea that life and death are interconnected, each giving meaning to the other. Freya's strength, independence and beauty made her an ideal symbol for Viking women who were expected to be both nurturing and fierce. This duality is reflected in the sagas and historical accounts of Viking women who often held significant power within their societies. Freya's legacy as a model of the ideal woman extended far beyond her role as a goddess. She became a cultural icon embodying the values and aspirations of the Viking people. In modern times, Freya's influence continues to be felt, particularly within the Arsatru movement, a contemporary revival of Norse paganism. Practitioners of Asatru and other forms of neo-paganism revere Freja as one of the principal deities, honouring her through rituals, festivals and offerings that reflect her complex character. These practices often incorporate elements of deity work, Norse magic and pagan altar traditions with devotees seeking to connect with Freya's energy and wisdom. Freya's influence is also evident in the cultural heritage of Scandinavia, where her legacy is preserved through place names, festivals and folklore. 
These enduring traditions highlight the lasting impact of Freya on both historical and contemporary spiritual life, demonstrating her role as a timeless symbol of strength, femininity and divine power. As we conclude our exploration of Freya, let's uncover a few lesser known facts about this remarkable goddess that further illustrate her complexity. Tears of gold. Freya's tears of gold are said to turn into amber when they fall into the sea, creating one of the most precious substances in Norse mythology. Chariot pulled by cats. Unlike many gods and goddesses who are associated with horses or other more traditional steeds, Freya's chariot is pulled by two large, fierce cats. These cats were a gift from Thor and are believed to symbolize her connection to both the domestic and the wild, reinforcing her role as a protector of both home and warriors, a surviving goddess. According to some interpretations of Norse mythology, Freya is one of the few deities who survive Ragnarok, the apocalyptic battle that marks the end of the world. This survival hints at her enduring power and the idea that love, fertility and the life-giving forces she represents are eternal. Human lovers. While Freya is known for her devotion to her missing husband Oda, she is also associated with several human lovers. These relationships emphasize her close connection to humanity and the mortal world, showing that the goddess of love and fertility was not confined to divine relationships alone. The battle for Brisingaman. Beyond its acquisition, the Brisingaman necklace is also the center of a myth involving a battle between Loki and Heimdall. In one tale, Loki steals the necklace, leading to a fierce fight with Heimdall to recover it. This story highlights the necklace's significance and the lengths to which others would go to possess it.